So here we are about to draw our segmental and uh, what we have here is uh, obviously the two pairs and with a segmental arch the rise should be uh, one sixth of the span so if we just just check here we can see that we're 900 on a scale of 1 to 10 900 millimeters so one sixth of 900 it's quite simple to work out, but we will just do it on the calculator so we can see. 900 divided by 6 equals 150. So the rise on this segmental arch would be 150. Now 150 is good because that's gauge, um, but we do have to be careful because sometimes you now if the opening was a little bit bigger or a little bit um, smaller than that, then the rise wouldn't be as convenient as 150. So if we find when we work that out that the 1 to 6 ratio doesn't work gauge then we do have to alter the rise because what we need to do is we need to make sure that when the top of the arch, the extra dos, um, is set it should come through on a bed joint. It really looks terrible if the arch is a bit low because then you have either a real big bed joint going over the top or you try to put little cuts in above it as well, which look terrible. If the arch is a little bit higher and you cut into the top of the brick, so you um, scallop a little bit of the, the bottom of the brick out, that sometimes doesn't look too bad. But the best thing to do is to, when the arch goes over, that it marries in with a bed joint nicely. So um, a little bit of... Um, forethought is needed on that you can't just make an arch center up put it in and then just run your brickwork over the top um blind as it were um so um we will show that when we actually um set this out on a board and then when we build it at the farm and uh, anyway so we're going for the center so 900 center of that is 450 so very very lightly just bring my T-square back. What we need to do here then is just plumb up that center. We're then going to mark 150 on a scale of 1 to 10 on a 1 to 100 ruler. So 150 is there. It's 100, that's 200, so 150 is there. So that is the rise of our arch. So what we need to do very, very gently, because these are just setting out lines that need to be rubbed out later on. We just from the striking point to the height of the rise, draw a line. And then what we need to do is then bisect that. And bisect that just means we have to half it. So if we put the point in at the spring and point, just make this a little bit bigger. All you have to be sure of is when you um, bisect um, any lines to get these angles, you just have to make sure that the compass is over half, and half is eight, over half the distance so that you can be sure that your two arcs will be big enough to cross each other. So very, very lightly. So all we need to do now is draw this line right through there. We need to just put our T-square back in place. And then where the center line crosses it, that becomes our striking point. So we now need to get the compass back into there to the spring and point. Before I do this, I always do a check that I'm happy and I'm happy with that. So there is the intrados. Now, from this striking point here, 
we just need to draw a line up and that will give us the angle of what we call, this has got two names this has, what we're drawing here is an abutment or I prefer to call it a skew back. So again from the striking point to the spring and point, a light line there, we just need to mark our stretcher and before I do too much I will open this up but I just want to be sure that this then works out with our T-square I've got our gauge mark there and that works through there very nicely. So what I will do is I will mark out the arch and then I'll, we, again we will label this one up. So we've drawn it out uh, a little bit darker so you can um, see it a little bit clearer. Um, so I've just um, set this up to 75mm, uh, 1 to 10 again. And what I always tend to do is I will um, flip it round. I do this on anyone, 150, yes, bang on 150. So I know, I don't think you can see that actually. Let me just do it on, I'll do it on here. So when I mark these out, I open these up, I do 75 and then I'll flip it over and there's dead on 150. So um, the same as if I'm doing a stretcher, the stretcher is 225, I'll do 225. And I'll always flip it around for 450. That one needs slight adjustment. Just so I know I've got exactly the right. There we are, 450. So I'll always double check by just flipping the dividers around. So now we have 75. So what I need to do is I'm working to um, get to the center there. Now i just point out, if this is just stretches, it doesn't matter how this finishes here. But if I want to bond this arch, you must have a key brick in the centre. Otherwise, you'd find yourself with a stretcher here and end up with two headers there for it to bond through. Or you'd have two stretchers or four headers together, which you don't want. So if it's a bonded arch, you always want to make sure that you finish um, or come to the centre with a key brick, which just simply means that you'll be a brick will be centre over the centre line. So um, I haven't decided what I'm going to draw this in yet, but um, I always think bonded arches look better. So we're going to go for a bonded arch, and hopefully this will be that's pretty good for centre. So. Because I like that, I'm going to work my way back. Just lightly marking. And again, because it's going to be an axed arch, I'm marking them out on the extra DOS. Like we said before, because this means obviously I will have to cut these bricks as they taper down towards the striking point. And again, as soon as I've done this, I will mark up um, all of the terminology. A little bit of concentration on this, that's why I'm not talking too much at the moment. And this should work the same because that should all be like centered. 
And that is lovely. Hmm. So, get rid of my T-square, give me a bit of space. And then from the extra DOS to the striking point, I then radiate these bricks to there. So once uh, we've gone through these, then obviously the principles of the set note we just simply take to a bench with a piece of ply and everything that we're doing here we just replicate on ply and then obviously that ply then becomes our arch centre or turn and piece depending on how big it is. The difference between, well, just um, on the terminology, the arch centre is the timber support that goes in to hold the arch in place as you're building it. But if you're actually doing just a small arch, you might get out one piece of wood. And when you get out one piece of wood, that's called a turn and piece. All right, so quite like that and because I think uh, a bonded arch does look better we will bond it so I'm just putting this back in I just need to mark um, a header and the way I'm going to do that is to go There. So from a striking point to where my header is, and again, archers always start or look better when they start off with a stretcher. So, oh, that isn't tight enough. I think I will use this one instead. Get the other one from a pen. see the reason why we have an odd number of bricks for a bonded arch just so we start with a stretcher stretcher and the center will always be uh, bondable okay so I'll just draw these all in pen and then we will um, do all the terminology again So drawn in a little bit heavier and coloured and uh, ready for the terminology. Uh, again, we'll just go with the familiar ones. We know here we've got the span. We know here we've got the rise. Now, what we just said about the rise should be one sixth of the span. Of the span. Ideally, but again, as we said before, and we do sometimes alter the rise just to make sure that the head of the arch comes coursable. So I'll just go head must be coursable. Right, so this one here, again, we called a scoo back. Um, it could be called, uh, as we said before, an abutment but I prefer to call it a scoo back, so that's what that's being called there. Um, here we have a bird's beak or a bird's mouth brick, which is always the awkward one to cut. Uh, in the days before grinders, and um, always had to be done with a scutch. Uh, took a little bit of time, but there's probably a bit more satisfaction doing it with a scutch than it is with a car. But, um, so there is your bird's mouth. Or as I said, bird's beak. 
these cuts here, all of these ones, these ones here, these are all called creepers. Jeepers. Um, this line here, that when we started um, doing the setting out for the the actual arc of this, this is called a chord with an H chord. And again, from that chord, we, if you remember, put our compass in and we bisected. Bisect. And here, when the line, the bisected line came down to the centre line, there became our striking point. And our striking point as with every arch is where we put our pin in and everything radiates to that point so every single joint radiates to that point so that's the terminology for segmental arch